ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. I'm, of course, Nick McDaniel, and as always, I am joined by my mud iron. Yes, folks. Yes, folks. It's a pleasure to be here. Please excuse my drainage. Um, it is uh, springtime, full bore in the south right now, and I am one giant congestion. I look well, like the Mus- I feel and look like the Mucinex mucus guy. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's it's rough down here in the South, man. Cars covered in green. If you park outside, yeah, people can't breathe. Everybody's on, you know, all types of allergy meds, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and then it, yeah, so it, it's so bad. Like people like get it prescribed. Yeah, you know, prescribed medication for allergies. How crazy is that? <laughs> uh, but if I was your doctor, you know what I would prescribe, Myron? What's that? I would prescribe that you actually go over to Patreon and sign up at patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod. Yes. Amongst many other things, uh, it's one of our favorite hangouts over on Patreon. Get the shows early, often, and a little bit of extras as well. But hey, if you also enjoy the show, one of the things we always like to say, we usually say it at the end, but I want to say it here in the beginning. If you're if you're one of our YouTube watchers, listeners, how, whatever how your preference is, make sure you are subscribing to the channel. Yes, definitely. Everybody is. Get on, get on board with all the cool kids. Subscribe to the channel. And of course, click that little bell. Make sure you get your notifications so when shows come out, Uh, Because, you know, now that's the only place you'll get the Georgia indie stuff is on our Patreon or on our YouTube channel. Uh, It's not going to be on the podcast platforms anymore. Uh, So you turn your notifications on, especially all you guys who like to keep up with that indie talk stuff. Uh, That's it's a key thing. Turn on your notifications and make sure. you know. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy Uh, the enjoy the greatness that is Georgia Independent Wrestling on YouTube. You'll love it, Uh, folks. We had a probably one of the best weekends of Georgia Indy Wrestling I've ever seen last weekend, and I'm still tired out from it. Yeah, it's going to be a huge show, so if you're one of our listeners, make sure this one's going to be a big one. Uh, and, of course, again, because it's really separate now, uh, so that's why we kind of encourage you want to have it and stuff. But um, lots of stuff going on on the regular, you know, on TV as well this week. Oh, uh, so wow. let's not waste any time, man. Jump right into the TV talk. There you can see what – we'll get into that one in a minute – but that was one of my favorite segments oh, of the week uh, on Raw. Cool. Uh, but lots of stuff going on. When you go all the way back to last week and a bunch of stuff going on. But, like, first question I had to ask you, man, is so we come out of Mania, Roman's, you know, the unified champion, whatever yes. they're calling him, the un- undisputed WWE universal champion, whatever they're, you know, whatever they're making up now. Uh, and we we think, like, Drew McIntyre or we think, you know, I'm, you know it could be a bunch of people, right? Mm-hmm. And they roll. And by the way, this is not a disrespect of because Shinsuke Nakamura appears to be the guy that's going to be the first challenger post Brock Lesnar. It struck me as odd. That. Yeah, I'd like to see that a guy that was uh, Intercontinental Star. I mean, not the belt, but the the world uh, prior to coming to you, you, uh, WWE. So I, I'm interested to see what they can do with Nakamura. He's a legitimate a, a wrestler. You know, he's a great talent. Yeah, I mean, we know he can be, I mean, you know, from New Japan and stuff, you know, we know he can be a player on, you know, he can dance mm-hmm. at that level. He can be a main eventer. Uh, he just hasn't been. So the question, you know, that I, I was asking a lot of people was like, is he is he a stopgap? Like, there's before they can find something else to do with him? Or do we think we can actually get a program for, you know, a little bit of time you out of him? You should be able to get a good program out of him. I think you could get something. I mean, it's not, you're not looking at a long-term thing. But I think you can get a good program out of it. You can get them with the next thing, or get the next guy elevated to that level. So go for it. Yeah, um, and a guy they don't have an issue with. I guess they're trying to say he's he's at that level from jump would be Cody. Uh, yes. And reference the picture we saw, you know, coming into the segment, uh, they had a Miz TV segment on Raw, which of course Cody was on there. Um, I know the internet was all a buzz about the whole like, Cody using band <laughs> word, <laughs> calling it, you know title or belts and this you know and you know wrestlers and the superstars and it was kind of a cool thing and i I really enjoyed it um you Mm -hmm. know but to me like i said it was it was almost the epitome of wrestler entertainer like like just nailed because that Uh both of those guys fit those roles perfectly yeah i think i think the miz um is the platform you can build anything on He's easy. You could put it, you put anybody in that spot Cody was in, and they're going to look good. But you put somebody of Cody's level in there with him, and he looks like a million bucks. He's elevated higher than what you had on him because the Miz is, um, you know, was it Art Anderson? Art Anderson said, "Don't call them jobbers, call them carpenters." 
I think Miz is the world's best carpenter. He, everybody that works with him winds up looking much, much better. So I, I think, it, I think this is the guy that uh, will give Cody the establishment he needs in WWE. Because if you don't remember him or you didn't know him or you weren't of all things an AEW fan, this is how you get a guy over to the people that don't know. Sure. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I think for the most part, people obviously know who he is and stuff. Uh, I mean, you know, and obviously they're going to progress down that road with, you know, clearly they're going to go down the Seth Rollins mat. They're going to rematch at Backlash and all that good stuff. I just kind of really liked it. it was a way of kind of taking that first step of Cody's different. He's yes. not, you know, he's not a sports entertainer. He's a wrestler kind of mentality. That's what it looks like they're going to go with. But um, mm-hmm. speaking of guy who <laughs> the day we saw him wrestle, like we were like the kid's a superstar. Um, Austin Theory, you know, obviously looks to be, and let me, I mean, he's a guy who I, and I, listen, I know a lot of, it's it's hyperbole, whatever you want to call it. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm completely over-exaggerating, but I am I. Is he their ne- is he Vince's next John Cena? Oh yeah, like he's taking a guy who's really young, who's really green, really raw, and like mm-hmm. hand chosen this kid, and is going to <coughs> mold him out and to make him in the that level of a superstar. What's he twenty two, twenty three years old? Somewhere there, he's twenty four, maybe at max. Okay, so you've got him right in his physical peak. You've got him when he's still moldable. This is when Vince is going to do his magic. This is when the greatest showman of all time. We'll, we'll mold this guy into the next uh, multimedia star. You're, you're going to look at a guy that's going to have the potential to not just be the next John Cena, but be the next rock. Well, movie listen, star. listen I, I'm when I say that, like, I, I mean, I'm like, I'm not, ever, I'm not saying he's going to attain the levels of like John Cena or the rock as far as I don't think he'll hit those levels. But I mean, what I meant by that is like Vince saw him as a project that he can make right. him. The top he's in the guy. program. Like he's a top he's, guy yeah. down the road. Not now, but down the road, he could see him as the yeah. main event guy. Um, will he cross over in the mainstream and do it? Yeah, probably not. But I don't know that Vince, you know, I, I just, that's what I mean. I just think, you know, but the, 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 the reason I'm even addressing him, of course, this week is listen, if you don't think this was a complete troll moment, you've lost your mind. Everybody talking about name changes or dropping this or whatever. I can I can see it that like the ultimate troll moment is Vince, you know, or the creatives, Bruce Pitcher, whoever, saying like they're bitching about names again because uh, Raquel um, Gonzalez, Gonzalez, is now yeah, Rod- Rodriguez. Rodriguez, they changed her name, so everybody went crazy. So Vince is like, "Damn it, we'll change theory," like because he like in the backstage and they do it on TV, like they make it an angle like on TV, a back a backstage segment. Yeah. And like theories, like, well, we just Vince McMahon and I decided, you know, it's like, all right, dude, he he's rubbing your nose in it at this point. I mean, he really is. Um, and you know what? I'm all for it because I think it's yeah. freaking hilarious. I, I I just love the way they're doing this stuff. You got to folks, just let Vince provide for you. Just just he's going to spoon feed us all what we need for sports entertainment. You're not going to get. It. I didn't say wrestling. Remember, remember this. I'm not telling you he's producing what we need if we were 80s NWA fans. I'm telling you he's producing what we need as sports entertainment fans. Just just, just eat your spoonful. Yeah. We'll I mean, it. I just found, I found it humorous. Um, but something I took serious is, uh, so obviously it looks like we're going to unify the tag belts. Ooh, ooh, Championships, wow. titles, not belts. See, I'm pulling a Cody now. Yes, um, Cody. Yeah. So it looks like we're going to end up because I know with like RK Bro wrestled Alpha Academy one and Street Profits wrestled Usos and Usos won, and we've kind of got this interaction and it looks like the Usos at some point I'm guessing Backlash probably have a match with RK Bro to unify those belts and I'm going to call I'm, them belts by the way I'm trying to figure out and I've keep reading these articles is the unified title good or is the unified title bad is the unified title good or is it bad. Is it going to take chances away from people? I don't know the answers yet. Okay. So, I don't know the belt unification answer. Hear me out and then answer me this. The reason I think it's good, um, the less belts, the more prestige. Okay. And that's just my opinion. Okay. Um, and then two, when you have all those belts, you're, in my opinion, 
you end up at times with people and I don't, and I don't mean the word deserve in the sense of, but like you end up with guys who are fighting, you know, for a championship that probably aren't really at that level yet okay. because you end up having to make like a constant, because now with the monthly pay-per-views, live events, premium live events, you end <laughs> up, you end up like constantly going through so many people that like it's just a constant like hey we got to find somebody for this we got to find somebody for this whereas now if you only had one championship you could have feuds to get chances at championships so matches that aren't revolving around championships mean more and then or you can just develop feuds with guys for other reasons that have nothing to do with the championships so what you're telling me is it's going to take better writing with less belts but it could be more entertaining. I believe it can. And I, I just come back. Ultimately, I just think there's <coughs> more prestige if there's one title. And I've said it on our show in the past. I think if you're a champion, you're going to have to work both shows. Well, look at look what they did with Roman over on SmackDown. He has had the title over there forever. And they were doing better ratings than Raw. On Raw, you had titles flipping back and forth all the time. Uh, apparently, it works. Well, you know, they kept the title on that San Martino guy for a while. He had yeah. a decent run. Yeah. Um, so maybe maybe, maybe that's what, what you need. Maybe it's prestigious to know who the champion is right off the top of your head. Yeah. Okay? If you say, hey, who's the WWE champion? You go, Roman Reigns. And not, Roman Reigns is a champion of this, and then the other guy's a champion on here. It's easier to market one champion, one belt, and then put him anywhere you need him. If you need that championship magic, on Raw, pull it over there. Put it over there. Well, guys so. are, like I said, guys are climbing the ladder on both shows to get to the guy at the top of the mountain versus, because let's be blunt, for a long time, we felt like one belt was inferior to the other. Yeah. If it's one guy, there's no, like, it's he's the top guy. Yeah. Now, you're still going to have your intercontinental U.S. I, and that's what I've always said, that respectively, those are your top brand champions at that point. Yeah. I think it would create more of a uh, prestige for those two championships if mm -hmm. they, you know, if there was only one big title. But mm -hmm. um, it, so much so, like, look, I mean, like I said, to prove my point, on NXT, Cora Jade cuts a promo basically saying she has to be NXT champion. She has to be the women's champion. Now, thank God oh. they don't have two women's titles, you know, on NXT, right? There's just yeah. a one main champion. But so much so that then it gives you an, a place that Natty comes back to be an obstacle because maybe she wants to be the champion. Yes, yes. And you also get the fact that if you want somebody to put you over, you want to make Core Jade your next star. You got Roxy coming up. You got Core Jade right now. You want to make her the next star to make her legitimate. You bring Natty down to put her over. Because Natty is by far probably the most respected independent, oh, sorry, the most ex a respected women's wrestler today as far as pedigree, history, dependability, everything she's done. So if you want a hero or, or you want to bring a supervillain down to get your superhero over, you got to bring up somebody, uh, bring somebody that's, that's a, a pillar of the wrestling community. Yeah. You got to bring a big deal down and this gets Natty on TV more because remember now that's shows on USA too. Two nights of wrestling on USA, back to back, bring a star over, rub the show, rub the talent, get more eyes on things. Yeah. And, and it's, like I said, you've got those, you've got those, those talents who you're not utilizing in other places. That's what, you know, we've had this conversation mm -hmm. as well, multiple times as far as that, you know, um, that they can just go down and work with those, you know, yes. work with the people down at NXT. And that's, I just, I'm all for it. I have been for a mm -hmm. while. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, because you're talking about giving rubs to the smaller shows, right? Like, you know, yeah. the Raw, you know, or Natty's actually, I think, SmackDown, isn't she? She's not even a Raw talent hell at this point. Who the fuck knows? I can't keep uh, But it. anyway, she goes to NXT to kind of boost that up a bit. Well, it looks like AEW's answer to boosting Rampage is they're going to have Adam Page and uh, Adam Cole. Adams. Yeah, the Adams are going to uh, work a match. It looks like this. I mean, is this going to be the blow off? I mean, is this literally going to be the blow off? For their their little feud here, is it good for the championship? Are they going to end this on a rampage? It looks like they are. It looks like let's pepper up the rampage by putting a title match feud type thing on there 
and get some eyes on it. Now, we all know it's going to happen Wednesday night. But still, it's going to be a tape thing. It's going to be that kind of match, so that's going to draw eyes regardless. We'll probably hear what a, by Thursday, we'll have heard what a great match this is. So on Friday, we'll want to tune into it. You hope, I'm looking forward to seeing you it. You hope that it goes well so that, you know. Yeah. Because the, the, the thing is, is that it also goes back to like, you know, A, I said, yeah, just end this thing. Because I wanted it over at the last pay-per-view they had. Yeah. Um, no disrespect to either guy. Just the feud's not working. But for me, and I get it, a lot of people love it. And that's cool. Um, my whole thing is, is if you're putting all your eggs in one basket, as far as, you know, putting this match on there to try to bump the viewership, which I completely mm-hmm. understand and agree with, by the way. But if it doesn't work, like, oh, man, it looks it's a bad look. Well, they got a lot of extra money to put that show on there, you know? Well, I mean, uh, we'll see. I mean, that's listen. That's going to come up later in the show. Because, look, if, if nothing else right now, AEW's putting on some great matches across yes. the board. Um, yes. Over the last week or so, we've seen, you know, um, that uh, Wheeler, uh, Mox, you know, John uh, Moxley, mm-hmm. they had a match, Daniel Bryan and Trent, the Bucks versus FTR, yeah. on and on and on. Every week, they keep putting out good matches, and I keep telling everybody, if 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 the wrestling in the ring is your for like that's your niche that's what you like better, mm. like you cannot you cannot fault AEW they're doing their part they are trying to grab you and hold you every single week. Yeah, and I mean if Cornette praised the uh, Young Bucks match for Christ's sake, right? It's a good match. They're doing the best they can. They've got the best talent, wrestling talent on there, uh, and that's where we shows our difference. We've got an entertainer talent on one show. You've got your wrestling talent on this show. It's something for everybody. It, well, and, you know, and AEW does have, you know, like Dan Housen for entertainment. And uh, that's really my only negative for the week is the the stuff with Hook. I, just, I, I, I like Hook, and I just think he needs to be away from all the comedy. I don't think he needs to this, be around. He's not ready day. for it yet. He's not developed enough for it yet. I, I just, think? I think the kid, so it, he took, he's Taz's kid. So let's kind of yeah. go with this. Taz was not a character that needed to be involved in comedy because that wasn't his that wasn't his was personality. Taz was super Correct. serious. I, and I have the vibe that hooks the same. He's, mm-hmm. you know, super serious. He needs to be super wrestler. Like Dan Housen, like trying to hypnotize him and it doesn't work because he's immune to it for some reason. You know, look, and here's the thing. I, I Dan Housen has a place. I you know, I enjoy the fact that he's an AEW well. There's just, I think, placement is a lot of, you know, the the, the particular here in the situation that I'm not a fan of. Um, mm-hmm. So, and sometimes selection is always important. And you one see. place that your selection is very, very important is over at our friends at Prize Picks. You still working on this? It's two minutes to kick off. Who do I pick? Two words, Prize Picks. It's so easy. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. It's just you against the number. Simply pick the over under on two or more players, and that's it. You can win up to 10 times your money in just one day. Join over 150,000 people who found a better way to play. Download the Prize Picks app today and get your first deposit match up to $100. That's right, man. Keep playing over there at Prize Picks. Use the referral code. It's going to be in our show notes on the podcast, YouTube, everywhere. Uh, make sure you're helping support the show there by using that referral code. We greatly appreciate it. I'm having a blast week in and week out. Picking. Oh yeah. Playoffs are going right now in the NBA. It's you know you can just you can do games. You can do the whole slate of games. Baseball. Up. Baseball just started up. So there's just lots of fun, man. So whatever your sport is, UFC, uh, you know, baseball, basketball, you know, in the playoffs runs. Believe it or not, man, they even got like Counter Strike and League of Legends and all that junk you can get into if you're into games. And you know who the players are. So lots of stuff you can play on there, man. Uh, wow. Big, big fan. Yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, but another thing, man, you got to check out, man, is uh, let's start with our questions. Because we, man, yes. we opened up the mailbag and started getting back into it this week. So, Myron, what's our first question? Our friend Darian from Titusville, Florida, asks, what do you guys think about the rumor of The Undertaker reportedly hosting a new WWE podcast series? Um I've enjoyed the WWE podcast so far. Uh, a lot of great talent making a, uh, making appearances on the shows. Got Bubba Ray Dudley coming up on 
Stone Cold show. Uh, is this the new Undertaker we saw at the Hall of Fame? Is this the new motivational speaking Undertaker we saw? I think as the guy that had, that was the judge of wrestlers court for how many years? I think this is a fascinating concept. I tell you why I'm a fan of this. Um, so, A, uh, I've been a fan of the Broken Skull Sessions, obviously, because it feels like when, when Austin gets people there, it's two buddies just talking. Yeah. Um, and because of the respect they have. Elevate that respect even to the point of Undertaker at this point. Um, I think it's, A, it's a way to keep Undertaker in wrestling without actually wrestling. Yeah. So yeah. there's that. Um, and look, I, again, maybe there's some exaggeration here. I don't think so. I think there will be people who will keep Peacock for this podcast. Could be. Nostalgia, nostalgia sells. We have proven that time and time again. Oh, God, yes. If and, Undertaker's and... cranking them out, kind of like Austin, it's a great reason to keep your peak, you know, keep Peacock to see, because you never know. Like, we think because for 30 years, we didn't see this Undertaker. No, uh-uh. we, we only saw it last week or two weekends ago. Right. So now, you know, between the last ride documentary and then, of course, this Hall of Fame. But now we're going to get a take. We're going to get an Undertaker that's Mark Calloway telling stories with his friends about being on the road and things they did. And some of the stories are going to be insane. I've just read a couple of little things that happened with him and Godfather. And Jesus, I want to hear this. I want to hear it all. Yeah. And there will be people lined yeah. up to appear on this show. Yeah. Lined up to I can't even show. imagine. Like, are they going to let him pick them? Are they going to pick them? You know, that kind of thing. That would be kind of cool to see how that evolves over time. But it doesn't matter. Let's be blunt. If you give me, I'm trying to think of just rattling off names in my head, the, the people that he can have on there, the stories they're going to be able to tell back and forth. I, again, I think when people talk about this podcast will be a more of a needle mover for Peacock than any wrestling match. That they yeah. could put on a pay per view, yeah. in my opinion. Well, this which this is appeals scary. to people that aren't wrestling fans anymore. Okay, how cool would it be to have someone who doesn't watch the current product, who's got Peacock anyway, sees this, tunes in to hear Undertaker and somebody from their childhood talk? Yeah, it, it's this kind of thing we always use our friend Billy as a benchmark for people who love pro wrestling but don't watch it. Right. He's the kind of guy that would be attracted to this. He's in his, he, you know, he's our age. Him and his daughter. Uh huh. It took them a week to watch WrestleMania because they watched it in bits. Yeah. But they binged to watch that new <laughs> WWE Evil like villain series. Mm -hmm. See that that's what we're talking about. It's two different things. Yeah. And I can see Billy watching this Undertaker thing completely by himself, staying up. And if there's multiple ones there, just binge watching them back to back to back, depending on how long they are. Because yeah. the Austin ones can be long sometimes, but like I said, it's it. I'm all for this. I'm. It's a needle mover as far as any and by any metric, I, in my opinion. And like you said, I think it tacks into an audience that's not even watching anymore. And that's what they want. Yeah, that's what Peacock, Peacock. wants, and Peacock's getting Peacock. it. So yes, Peacock. That deal has worked out so well. Yeah, because there's a lots of things that I think th you're doing things to change the game and change the models. We always talk about chess and checkers. Uh, with WWE, which honestly, I think their next question leads me into another point of what I think, you know, when I think of that. So go ahead this and get so us the cool. next question. So cool. This is uh, Jesse from Sumner, Iowa. I guess that's what I yes. is. I keep, okay. I, I lose those, those I states. Do you think that, uh, do you guys think about the, ah, sorry, the congestion. What do you think do about? You, yeah. What do you guys think about WWE announcing its first stadium show in the UK in 30 years? I am so hyped about this because it's not like 30 years ago where I had to wait on a VHS tape to drive ac across the ocean. I can see it live or I can watch it after it's happened online. Yeah. Streaming is making wrestling a product. We've watched wrestling live from Saudi Arabia, folks. Anywhere in the world wrestling can happen now. Why not take it to England? Why not get your European fan yeah. base? What are they, involved? six hours ahead? 
something like that. So if they did it at a 8 p.m., it would be 2. It'd be a 2 o'clock I don't even know all the states in this country. And by the way, folks, guess what's amazing about it? It's on a Saturday. It's going to be on a sa- Saturday, September the 3rd, uh, 2022, obviously this year. Um, they're doing it in Wales at the uh, – it's their national rugby union team, Principality Stadium. Uh, they, uh, I've got some figures I just wanted to make sure I had. So roughly the capacity is 75,000, but then 2017 they did a boxing match there. They did 78,000. So I would assume you could do kind of very similar. Yeah, at um, least 75. The only thing maybe not, though, is if you have the big, you know, how big the entrance is. Do they do WrestleMania-style yeah. entrance, whatever, ramp-wise? Um, and they haven't done it. Like you said, God, it was been insurrection. That yeah. was 18 years ago that they've they've had a pay-per-view there. Yeah, the last one they did was uh, the big one was the SummerSlam with Brett and with Bulldog over there uh, mm-hmm. for the for that title. And uh, you know, we go about this a lot, and I and it's something I've in on shows in the past I've said. WWE is a global company, um, and it, I, and I think, in my opinion, that it would go. I think they should do this more. Yeah, definitely. which is weird as somebody who lives in the state saying I think they should do this type of stuff more. Because well, I think we're spoiled that everything is here. We see, we can see them so often that we take it for granted. And and again, I'm not saying good or bad here. I'm just saying we take it for granted. Those guys don't get it often. So when they go over there, they draw. They're huge. Yeah. They're rowdy crowds. Yeah. I think they do seventy, seventy five thousand, you know, easily. easily when they go over for this yeah. show. Depends on what they put on the card. Don't get me wrong. I think that'll yeah. matter tremendously. It will matter. Um, but. It's not like the old that you were talking about. Buy, you had to go back and get a VHS tape and all that kind of stuff to see when you know, like the last one happened. Well, mm-hmm. dude, you, you've got Peacock. You can watch this thing anytime you want to. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you know you should complain of like, well, I don't think. Th- think of this. If so, if it happens again, I have lots of presumptions here because I can't remember. I think they're six hours ahead. So if they did it at eight o'clock their time, it's two o'clock our time on Saturday. Saturday night, you could just choose to come home at eight, seven, eight o'clock, whatever. Mm-hmm. Fire up your Peacock. And then just mm-hmm. watch it. Mm-hmm. And, and you can watch it Myron style because if there's crap you don't want to watch, you can just zip right through it. Exactly. exactly. So, you know, and my tip, stay off stay off social media for six hours and, and, so you don't get spoiled. I've had to do that before, okay, to, to prevent spoilers, especially with working the weekend of WrestleMania. Um, it is possible to stay off social media for six hours. It's very Difficult. easy. Yeah. Difficult but possible. Yeah, I took Facebook off my phone, so it's not. It's really simple for me, that, and I did it for part of, part of those are the reasons. I don't want spoiler things. I mean, when I'm working, I can look at it on my computer. If I'm not on my computer, I just don't see stuff. Okay. Man, easy okay. enough. But, um, yeah, I'm excited for it, man. And like I said, I, I'm stunned they don't do it more. Do, like, make it a tour, man. Do a show, you know, in the U.K., you know, do it in Germany, then do hit here and hit here, you know, all over the place. Uh, go to Australia after that flyer. I don't know. But, oh, uh, Australia's a big wrestling territory. I don't know if people realize that back in the old days, Australia was a huge territory, made a lot of money. Dude, and look, I, it's something as simple as looking at our demos for where for where people listen to shows, uh-huh. I tell people all the time, that's why I said I think it would serve them. Because here's the other part, Myron. When you serve the markets outside of the U.S., it's WWE Network still. It's not Peacock. Yeah. If they served it more, would they gain more subscribers internationally? If they were, mm-hmm. if that base felt like they were being mm-hmm. served more on that level, just my, just that's part of the thought. Mm-hmm. But what do I know? But I tell you what, I do know. Yes, man. Look, we're getting older. You know, look. I mean, you can tell the beard. I mean, you know, you get hairier, man. You got to try to keep tidy. You got to try to keep clean. And the way you do that, man, is you check out our friends over at Manscape. Check them out. Whoa, personal foul. What the feezy? You can't use a beard trimmer below the 50-yard line. This is the Waterproof Lawnmower 4.0 by Manscaped. What's the difference? It's got new skin-safe technology to help reduce cuts and nicks. It's powerful, yet gentle, just like me. Dog, I appreciate you. Boop. Hey, watch out. Uh, I'm not ticklish. Get yours at manscaped.com. That's right, man. Hand over again. Our link is going to be in the show notes, so make sure you're using the referral link. 
Uh, I'll try to share it on our uh, social media again. As I love well. that. I love that thing where he tries to shave the little version <laughs> yeah. of himself. It's, <laughs> that tickles me every time. But you know what doesn't tickle? A nice manscaping. That's right, man. Uh, did and, you say you got a nose hair trimmer from? I didn't. Yeah, if you do the package, there's a premium package that they oh, offer. I, I always tell people to sign up for that. You get the nose and ear hair trimmer. Uh, you get the, uh, the the lawn the lawnmower 4.0, and then you get like two uh, of their uh, products that they offer, like the deodorant, the um, the yeah, powder. I just bought a la carte. I should have bought. I should have always bought. buy the package because then you can sign up every month, and they're going to send you for like it's a low price of like fourteen ninety five. You get to try like two of their uh, products every month. It's just like a subscription well, service that comes. Wrestling fans, the summertime is coming. Let's 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 not stink up the venues. Yeah. Okay. Keep it clean. Keep it hairless. Uh, sit on those nice hard benches and chairs with a nice bare uh, undercarriage. Exactly, man. You always want to be clean. Uh, but something that's a little fuzzy right now, it's not very clean, is uh, oh. we've had some questions with the whole, some mergers and stuff in, uh, coming on. So uh, let's go to our next question. Caleb from Durham, New Hampshire, wants to know, what do you think about AEW's future following the Warner Media Discovery merger? It's now called... Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah. Okay. Um, is this like AOL Time Warner? It's the same company, right? Uh, yeah, at one point, it's kind of broken, split, and merged, and it's it's a mess. And, and that's it's a it's a TV con- it's a it's a TV network with a wrestling show. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Discovery's all about science and stuff, right? Yeah, and believe it or not, dude, we really dig it. We have the Disney, uh, the Disney Jesus. We have Disney too, but we have the Discovery, uh, pl- the Discovery app plus app, whatever it's called. I can't even remember. My wife loves it, but uh, but we watch a lot of the nature shows and that kind of stuff on there because I like documentary stuff. I'm weird that way. Um, but yeah, like so, there's lots of cool stuff on there. Um, it, but how does how does all of this you know boil down to AEW? Because here's the thing, you know, a couple years ago. When AEW signs this deal, so they're on TNT at the time. Now they're TBS and TN, you know, across the across the platforms. Yeah, yeah. The challenge becomes the next contract, because much like like, it, I, I don't panic. I'm not saying this. I'm saying these, these are possibilities. One of the concerns is WCW went through this like you you brought up a minute ago. The, the same issue. The AOL, Time Warner, all of that merger, they basically decided they wanted to go in a different direction because guess what? There's a new head now. It's not the person at the top of the food chain who signed off on the AEW deal to begin with. Now, are they safe, Myron? Probably because they're one of the higher rated shows other than basketball on there. So they have a lot of ammunition to argue for. Mm -hmm, The mm -hmm. problem was WCW was at its peak and there were already people ready to... Get rid of it. They just didn't want to be around wrestling. Stigma. Yeah. Wrestling has a stigma uh, in, in the uh, professional entertainment world. Um, I don't think many people understand it. Uh, it is a greasy business. Okay? If, if you've been around it at all, you've, you've had a little bit of grease strip on you in some form. Uh, advertisers, not, not, a, not a great advertising market. People complain about Vince all the time, but what Vince has done to sanitize his product has made it more advertiser friendly. And you need advertising dollars to continue to have a show on television. That's how that works. Unless you're paying, it's a paid content service. I have less concerns with like content. Hear me out here from an advertiser standpoint at this point with AEW, my bigger concern would be the only way I think they're in trouble is if we end up in the exact same scenario if the new leadership just doesn't feel like it fits their vision. Their vision of, of whatever they blood. want their channels to be. Lots of blood, cursing, scantily clad women. You know, middle fingers, all that, you know, all that kind of stuff. Whatever it may be, I just they may just see like remember, there was a minute, you know, USA was like, we're the drama channel. Or uh, TNT, that was their thing. We want to be the drama channel. They didn't. That's why they didn't want anything to do with WCW at the time, right? They wanted to be the drama. That's what they wanted to be. Hell, their mm-hmm. freaking tag, I think, on Twitter is TNT at drama or drama on t- something like that. Yeah. Um. So I, that's what I mean by like, as long as the vision doesn't change, I think they're okay. Um. That's the only concern because guess what? From when when figureheads change, not figure, but you know, heads of the, of the companies change. Yeah. Like. 
massive changes can happen. So, I, I I think they're probably in a spot where another network would pick them up. Sure. The the, the but is there another network with enough money to do the deal they would want? Uh, do you run into that? Are you going to become a free agent thing? It's always good to have a you know just to be locked in nice and tight. Yeah, you know, I think they'll be okay. Um, but like I said, I, I am really intrigued. Um, it's funny because everybody was like the last round of TV rights negotiations. Uh-huh. Everybody, oh my God, it was the most important. No, nah, the most important ones are always the next one. Yeah. So, because yeah. n- now I'm intrigued to see like, hey, what happens? Does WWE get that big deal like they got from Fox? Do they get another renewal? Because let's be blunt, they're going to milk USA again because USA didn't pay what Fox did. Mm-mm. So it's going to climb, but do the SmackDown get a deal or do, does USA come full board and just say, we'll pay you one big lump sum of money for both shows to get them both back. Yeah. yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that I, you know, it depends, but uh, I'm, I'm, that's su- I'm the thing is it. it is a blessed time in wrestling where we can start talking about TV deals being big. <laughs> okay. You may not have the viewership you had back in the attitude era folks, but they're paying a lot of money for it. Okay. Yep. Stockholders are happy. You're getting all the high production. Love it. Wrestling's at a it, it's at a it's at a really good time right now. Enjoy it. Yeah. Lots. You know, more things change. Some things stay the same. Uh, but yes. one thing that is changing leads us straight into our next question. Yes. Man. Taylor from good old Franklin, North Carolina, back down here in the states. I know where they are. Now that Ring of Honor and AEW are basically tied together. What are some cross promotion dream matches you guys would like to see? Well, I want to see Britt Baker and Deanna Perrazzo. I figured that was going to be one of yours. <laughs> yeah, God, Deanna's, Deanna's my favorite. She's her and Jordan Grace are my top two favorite women's wrestlers right now. Uh, she is so good. Britt Baker is so hot right now. She's she's the brutal one. Yeah, I want to see that. I, I think that top tier there of uh thunder rosa Britt baker and diana perrazzo being tied now the complication is um it's semantics i get it um but so tony khan owns ring of honor and i and i I don't know am i overthinking it and i could be tony khan owns ring of honor tony and daddy khan own aew oh so on one hand, they're oh. tied together, but they're two different companies. And Tony Khan has gone out of his way on multiple occasions to distinct that he owns Ring of Honor. Like, it's a separate company. Um, it's not the same ownership of that owns AEW. Now, um, do, does Ring of Honor have any contracts right now? I, that's a good question. Um, look, they've clearly, like, you know, they had the super card. Um, you, Very well received. Yes. Um I think with, with I think you're going to have like because Gresham now was both champions. You know, he's got he unified those belts when they had the interim and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think if we watch Supercard of Honor, I think we saw Tony Khan make decisions on who's going to be there and who's not going to be there. Okay. So you know we're going to violate some of those. What I think because they asked he asked the question, what are matches that we would like to see out of it. Um, mm-hmm. and one that I, you know, look, I've been a fan of Flip Gordon for a while. I mean, he was tang. I mean, look, mm-hmm. he was, he's been around with the being the elite yeah, guys when yeah, they were over yeah. there. So there's back history there with those guys, but him and Sammy, like two super young, I mean, you know, Flip, Flip's a little bit, but Sammy and him yeah. have a, could have a monster, for, you know, run together. I think they could put on, they could just tear the house down on some matches. So I that would, yeah. yeah, but it's probably a surprise for me to pick that one that people would probably think of other matches first, yeah, but yeah. those two, I would love to see. You well, know. there's a chance to have a, a special lucha match. How about that? What do you got? You got Ray Phoenix and Bandito. Mm-hmm. I I could warm up to that. Yeah, they've got some history there. I mean, they've wrestled at PWG and stuff uh-huh. before. I, I think, but you know, them being on the stage they are now and the yes. level they are now, I think they could just. It, to me, it could be cruiserweight isk, you know, from back in WCW days when they have those type of matches on AEW. I think it would give them something that you just don't get in WWE. It would stand apart. They would be different because you're yeah. like, you can't get this on their show. 
Yeah, definitely. Right. So that that's I, like I that agree guy. with you 100. percent So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What what up next? What next? You think? Um, listen, we talked about the whole. You know, we hope the Cole and the the Page you know feud ends on Rampage, and they could move on. So let's talk about champion versus champion. Now, I don't think Tony Khan's going to do this, look, but I get it because you'd have to have a guy lose, right? No, you don't. Yeah. Champion versus champion hardly ever ends that way. Um, but Hangman Page versus Jonathan Gresham, I think those two could just completely tear the house down. Yeah, that would be good to see. I love watching Gresham wrestle. Yeah. He is the te- the technical stuff. He's like a, a Dean Malenko to me. He's like our current right. Dean Malenko. Um, I love seeing him work. Hangman is very, very appealing also. So I would like, I think this would be fun. Yeah, Hangman's a totally different style. He's got some high flying stuff in there. He's got some of the basics, but Gresham being that mat guy, right. I just think that, like you said, mm-hmm. it's um, the one that I will throw a loop in is because everybody, you know, for the longest time, it was what FTR and the Briscoes. Well, they just did that. Yeah. So I didn't want to pick that. that. Yeah. So we got that one. And it, as great as it was, and everybody wants to see the rematch, right? That's great. But I was like, you know who really would be a good brawl style match for those guys? This new team, they uh, you know, the the Blackpool Combat Club with uh yeah. John Moxley and Brian Danielson versus the Briscoes. Dude, sign me up today. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it, know, that'd be that'd be violent. Yeah. That'd be violent. Um you know, I'm just such a huge Regal fan. I bought my Regal t shirt from uh from Pro Wrestling Tees the minute it came out. Uh, it's it's so good to see him out front again, you know, on a regular basis. So. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, that whole group, and I think if you had the Briscoes, like if you put it on a pay-per-view, man, sign me up. Like I said, take my money, yeah. uh, you know. But like I said, if you want to really sign up for somewhere, man, it's always sign up over our place over at Patreon, yes, patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod. Like we said, you get the show or, you know, get it early. As, we, as soon as we record, I upload it as fast as I can. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. Some days, like today, it'll be Wednesday. Not, some days it's Tuesday. Some weeks it's Tuesday. Just always depends. But hey, it's a good place to subscribe and sign up because even what people don't realize, if you're not a paid member, the stuff still releases there. Where it's free at the release date. But most mm-hmm. people, we always say, like they prefer to subscribe somewhere else, whether it be YouTube. If you're our YouTube, like we said at the beginning of the show, make sure you're subscribing. Click that little bell to get the notifications when new stuff drops. Like I said, because, you know, the show will drop at one time. The Georgia Indie Talk section will drop another. This, you know, mixes it up a little bit. And, of course, if you're a podcast listener, Apple Podcasts, iHeartMedia, Spotify, Google, you know, Google Podcasts, Amazon. I mean, who ever thought Amazon? Like, really? Like, well, you can listen to us on Amazon? <laughs> I tell Alexa all the time in my I house, hey, Alexa, play the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. Boom, and I she does. It. I love it. Yeah, love so. It. And uh, any place that like that, I mean, you know, make sure you're subscribing. Give us a five star rating review. We greatly appreciate those, amongst many many things. Uh, you know, and make sure. Hey, look, a key thing too. If you if you enjoy the show, we try to pick products to you know as far as our sponsors mm-hmm. stuff that like I said, I play Price Picks almost daily. Manscape we use. Uh, you know, we've got others lined up. I you know I've signed a few others here the last couple of days. Uh, you know, but I wanted to test them out first. We try to you know, use stuff we believe in. That's kind of our big yes. thing is we try to. Um, and so if you want to support the show and you see some stuff that you like, use our referral codes, use our links in the mm-hmm. show notes and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Use the products. And, it, you know, like I said, they're going to take care of us. They're going to, you know, for some referrals and stuff. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that helps us support the show. And we, you know, yes. keep us doing this week in and week out. So mm-hmm. uh, you got anything else, man? Because, you know, we got no, we got to finish here and then we got to record an indie talk stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I had fun with the show. I'm looking forward to uh, to the Georgia Indie Talk too myself. <clears throat> I love having so damn much wrestling to talk about. Okay. It's a great time. Yeah. So everybody's like, oh, it's uh, 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 I just enjoy what we got while we got it right now, folks. Don't predict a failure of anything. Just yeah. enjoy what you have. Yeah, I said it last week. I'll say it again, man. I think the the mania wave kind of got WWE some momentum. You know, I think at Ring of Honor having their show momentum. Mm-hmm. AEW's on a good roll. Look, everybody's doing pretty good right now, man. Just stop beating it up and try to enjoy the ride, man, because I think it's yep. going to be a hell of a ride here for the next few months at least, right, until mm-hmm. we see what's going on. So, Amen. Yeah. So, um, well, man, you got anything else before we get out of here? Nope. I got nothing else, Nick. Well, it's the old saying, brother. If I've got nothing and you've got nothing, what time is it? It's time to tap out.